everybody, and welcome to the Uber walkthrough here on Driving with Kevin. Uh, before we really get into this, um, I just kind of wanted to update everybody on the weekend. I had a a pretty good weekend. Uh, I drove in a different market, which is always always a good time. Um, but uh, I don't really think I want to get into that in this video. So let's let's jump right in to the Uber app. So what you're looking at here on the screen is the Uber driver app. This is what every driver sees when they open the app. Uh, this orange spot over here, uh, just to the left of my little arrow here, uh, means that uh, we're currently surging here in Dubuque. Um, basically, um, they're trying to get drivers on. Um, so they, they drop a surge in there to try to attract drivers. Um, it's probably not a legit surge. Meaning it's it's man-made, it's not demand-created. Um, so, but anyway, as we look at this app here, um, you see several things here. Um, obviously, up on the top right, you have the the online offline toggle switch. I'm not going to turn it on because I would almost bet you money I would get a ride request if I turned it on. So I'm not going to turn it on right now. Um, but um, that's what that indicates up on the left here. Um, this button right here, you push this. This is where you can adjust what kind of trips you want to take. Uh, so it open to all trips here, you push the little grind and it, it shows you these are the trips that you can take in your market. So obviously I have a Volkswagen Jetta, so I am limited to Uber X. Um, pool and Eats are not here in this market, so I don't have to worry about those. Um, so Uber X is the only thing that I can take in my vehicle in this market. Um, so the green circle indicates that I am open to all trips available in Dubuque for my vehicle. So um, obviously if, I, if Eats is available or Pool is available and I don't want to take them, uh, the circle would not be fully green. It would be probably orange, maybe even red if there's only one thing I want to take. So... Um, uh, let me take care of these notifications here real quick. Um, sound of that. All right. Sorry about that. Um, and then you have your destination filter. And what your destination filter does is it sets it up so that um, you can set a destination for wherever it is you're going. So say you're going to a specific place, you need to be there by a specific time. So you can set a destination filter. Okay, so say my home, my address is right there, it just blew me up. Um, so if, if you need to be, um, if, if you want to go home, okay, let's just say you want to go home, you can set um, your destination filter to home. You can add an arrival time saying you're either leaving now or you want to arrive by a certain time. Then once it's on, what it'll do is it'll only get you trips that are on the way or get you close to that destination filter. Um, so this is also good if you take an out of market trip. If you take a trip out of market um, and you want to get a trip back to your market, you can set a destination filter to get you back to where you want to be. Um, and it'll only give you trips that will get you where you want to be. So um, I, don't I don't really use a destination filter a lot. A lot of drivers do and they love it. I am not a driver that uses it. I don't get a lot of use out of it. Um, you can use two per day. Uh, they were experimenting, experimenting for a while with allowing drivers to take more than two a day, and that lasted for, I think, like three or four days. And they put the kibosh on it. So now it's back to two per day. So that is what that looks like. Um, so you can see that surge of shrinking. They probably had another driver come online. Um, so what else is on this page? Um, up in the right corner, this is your uh, surge indicator. This is only on your screen when there's actually a surge. When you click on it, it gives you what the different level of colors mean. So 1.1, um, when there's a surge, 1.1 is the lowest surge you will have. Basically what that means is that it's adding 10% more on to what you're already making. So 1.1 um, is the lightest color and anything above three will be a deep red. Um, so this just that this here just centers it back, zooms it in, centers it. Um, that's what that's what that does. If you pull this up, 
Uh, it tells you what you've made for the day. You can see I've made zero dollars today. Um, I have not been online at all. I'm taking no trips. Um, what this second panel does is it gives you a safe driving report. It tells you uh, smooth brakes, smooth accelerations. As you can see, I did really well when I drove on Saturday. Um, so um, the next panel, if you have any new tips, it tells you you received X number of dollars in new tips. And then you have your invite panel. It tells you how much you can get for inviting people to drive in your city. So um, it just says drive in general now. They, they've changed it recently. but um, So that's the main page. That's the first page that you see. The upper left, you see it says play music. Um, as an Uber driver, you get free access to Pandora. I think Pandora's free anyway. They have a pay service, um, but they have this exclusivity here with the Uber app. You can do it directly from the app. It's really awesome. Um, and then this shows you, you can create your own channels or you can browse and see what's out there. Shuffle shuffles everything. Every single channel, it just shuffles them all together. Um, and then these are all the channels that I've ever listened to at any point. Even if I listened to one song or I was looking for the channel and I played it for 30 seconds, it shows up on this, this list here. So um, Machine Gun Kelly, I, listened, I was looking for one song, and here it is. A brunch Cafe, I pushed out one on accident, here it is. So um, that's what that is. You, like I said, you can browse, you can create. Um, sorry about that. Um <laughs> So that's what the Pandora button does. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have um, earnings, ratings, and accounts. So we're going to go through these one by one. All right, so first of all, earnings. This is the main page that tells you how much money you have made. So you can see right here, 83.12. I'm going to throw that away for now. Uh, 83.12 is what I made this week. Below that, you see a cash out button. You push the cash out button you get the money deposit into your account instantly. If you do not cash out, uh, you'll get your money direct deposit into your bank account once a week. Um, cashing out puts it in your bank account. Generally for me, it's within 20 minutes. Um, and there is a 50 cent fee for doing so. So you still get 8312 deposited, but you will start next week in the whole 50 cents. So that's just how that works. So earnings this week, this gives you a day by day breakdown of driving. I drove in another market this last weekend. Um, so that was Saturday. I made $75. I worked for about five hours. So what this does is it breaks it down. It tells you I've made $83.12 in earnings. $77.12 of that was actual trip earnings. $6 of it was tips. I didn't get a lot of tips this weekend. Uh, doesn't mean I did a bad job. Uh, it just means that uh, I didn't get a lot of tips. People didn't feel like tipping. So um, you can click on transactions. It shows you... Uh, each and every ride that you gave you can see here um, also tips are included in here and when you had when you have when you have uh, deposits those are also on here um, I haven't had any deposits this week so that's not on there there's nothing on there um, Wednesday you can, I can look at my trip on Wednesday five dollars twelve cents three dollar tip for a grand total of eight dollars twelve cents was online for 29 minutes you can click on this click on the individual trip it gives you the map uh, shows you the routing um, and then it gives you the duration of the trip and how, how many miles you wrote. Then it gives you a breakdown. So you get a base fare, you get a distance. Um, my market's 84 cents per mile, which is shitty. Um, and then time, um, how much time it took you multiplied by the time rate, which in this case is 13 cents. Okay, and then my $3 tip. Optional insurance, um, I have um, death and dismemberment, I think, insurance uh, through Uber, and that comes off of every single trip that I make. Um, it's literally 3.0375 cents per mile. So it's it's about four cents a mile. No big deal. Um, so I made $8.12 from this trip. So you can click on help. If you click on help and you look in the individual trips, click on help, you get all these help categories here. Okay. Um, I was in an accident, I found an item, issues with my fare, issues with the rider, and then these are general, these last two are just a general, they're not, they're not trip specific, it's just a general help. So issue with the rider, you can say, you picked up the wrong rider, they were rude, they made me feel unsafe, 
uh, rider made a mess in my vehicle, change rider ratings or rider, rider damaged my vehicle. So damage means that something happened to your car um, as a result of um, the rider. The rider did something in your in your car. So um, beyond normal wear and tear. So um, you have to provide photos and you have to provide a professional estimate um, re cleaning fees, I think, are different. Um, I personally have never had to use this. A rider made a mess in my vehicle. Um, so, obviously they didn't, so I'm not going to go ahead and follow through on this, but... Um, so, this is a rider damage my vehicle. So, this is if they did any damage to the vehicle. And then a rider made a mess would be if some if they puked in your car. Again, photo of the mess, additional photo of the mess, details, and then you have to confirm the rider's name. Um, or if you don't remember the rider's name, you remember where you picked them up or where you dropped them off. If you include that, that'll help them narrow it down. You click on the ride and then click help, and it doesn't, for some stupid reason, it doesn't link it to that ride. I don't understand why. Um, again... You have to take a photo. So if you have a mess in your car, somebody spills beer or spills a drink or pees on your seat or throws up, whatever the case may be, you have to take a photo before you clean the mess. You have to. They, they require you to take a photo before you clean it. Um, that is how they determine whether or not you're going to get money for it. Almost every mess that's out there that a, that a rider can make, that a passenger can make, is going to get some sort of cleanup fee. If it's a mess on the seat, it's probably going to be 50 bucks. Okay, all the way up to 150 or, or 250, depending on um, what it is. So here it says, within three business days, please submit a photo of the mess. If somebody pukes in your car, um, and as soon as they get out, you pull the car over and you take those pictures. That's just what you have to do. Um, there's no other way around it. If you need to make a note along with the picture of which ride it was that you took that made the mess, do so. Continue driving or go clean the mess. Generally speaking, most drivers will clean the mess and keep going. Um, just because you're going to lose time because you have to clean that mess. But, you know, would you rather clean, would you rather take 10 minutes to clean the mess or would you rather go home and, and sulk? You know what I mean? So, uh, most riders will clean the mess and then continue driving. So, but again, don't drive with a messy car. If you passionately made a mess in your car, clean it before you before you continue driving. But make sure you take those pictures, all right? And keep a note of which ride it was for so you can submit it accordingly. That is probably the biggest one you're going to use. Um, the wrong rider took this trip. That that has happened to me. Um, you just tell them what happened. They, they figured out. Um, I don't remember what happened with my situations, but rider was rude. Um, you can submit that and just be like, well, you know, I don't want to. Basically, all this is going to do is just going to make sure that you never get that rider again. So Uber and Lyft both have ways they can block um, you from getting requests from certain passengers. So that's, that's all that is. Um, and then I found an item. Um, I found an item. I returned an item. This is different on Lyft, and we'll we'll go through that in a different video. But if you find an item or you return an item before you submit a claim that you found it, um, they will charge a rider fifteen dollars. Um, you can return it on your own without notifying Uber. That's perfectly fine if you don't want the rider to pay a fee. Um, I have done both. Um, I, Uber obviously would prefer that you submit it to them and and get charged. They charge a rider a fee. Uh, because the driver's taking time out of their day to, or uh, you know, out of their already busy lives and their already busy, already busy schedule to return that item, so they would prefer that you submit it. So um, I was in an accident. I've never been in an accident driving, but again, you fill this out um, and take pictures of a vehicle and you send it in. I don't know what happens. I've never had an accident um, in my vehicle. So um, issues with my fare. This is where. You submit if you feel um, you were that the rider was charged unfairly. Um, 
I forgot to end or begin my trip on time. You forget to push the button. This happens. It's probably the most common reason why they have to adjust the fare. Um, trip is missing from my pay statement and my pay all parking fee wasn't included. Too many riders. Um, this one only works if you have a large vehicle. So if you if you go pick, go, go to pick up a passenger and they, they try to squeeze five people in your car and you have a minivan, you obviously can take more than five people. So that's the only time this button actually works. I have submitted this before with my vehicle when I had five people in my car and all they told me is I don't qualify for XL. Don't do it again. So that is the only time that um, that button works. I had too many riders in the vehicle. If you have XL and you picked up an Uber X and they had more than four passengers, that is the only time that works and the rider gets charged the difference between an XL and an X. So um, that's that one. Um, and then um, I had a different issue with my fare. Um, the trip did not begin or end on time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so this is basically anything that doesn't fall into any one of these categories on here. Um, I want to refund my rider. This is a new one. Um, this just means um, maybe the passenger's having a bad day. Maybe something happened and you don't feel like they should be charged. You know, whatever the case may be, that's what this one is for. This gives us as rider, as drivers, the flexibility to, to give a passenger a free ride. I don't know of any drive any any drivers that would actually willingly give a passenger a free ride. I would. I, I gauge it on situation. Um, I have had situations before where I asked for the ride to be refunded. Maybe I routed bad. Maybe maybe they said something about you know how I took the wrong route or I took the long way. You know I didn't do it intentionally, but you know maybe I I got lost or I got turned around. Um, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't go the, the way that I was supposed to go. Um, in that situation, I asked for my, my rider to receive a full refund or a, I think a partial refund. Um, again, you can say if, if you want to issue them a full refund or a partial refund, um, you can put that down below and then they take care of the rest. So that is a new one. Um, my boost is incorrect. This just means, um, that you, you, you received a ping at 1.7 and you were only paid 1.4 basically. Um, how do you feel? But you have to take a screenshot of it, which is, um, difficult to prove that you got, you got pinged at 1.7 and only got a 1.4, you know? Um, I have had it happen where I've received less than what I was supposed to receive. Or, and I've had situations happen where it pinged me at 1.7 and I got paid 3.9. And, um, it may, that's an extreme example, but I have had that happen before where I've actually gotten more for the ride than what it got pinged at. And I think the reason why that happens is because you get the ping at a certain surge and then it grows before you get to them. So I think they give you what the surge is when, when you get there. So not, not what it was when I pinged. I don't think that's how it's supposed to work, but I have seen that happen before. So that's the help screen. And the only reason why I went through that with you guys is so that you understand what the help categories are, how to effectively use it. The bottom here is the fair details. This gives you, again, a more detailed description of the ride. So I'm going to try not to share any of the details about where they went or where I picked them up from, even though it's right fucking there. Um, so again, um, gives you a map, gives you everything you need to know about the ride. Um, it has um, how much they paid. So again, the breakdown that we saw on the previous screen, $8.12. But the reason why I like this is because it tells you how much they paid for the ride. So eight dollars and twelve cents is what I received after the after the tip, okay. And this is here they paid nine forty three plus they paid the tip, so they paid a total of twelve forty three, which means Uber collected four dollars and seventeen cents um, out of a twelve dollar out of a total twelve dollar fare. Um, so essentially, um, if you take out the tip, they they paid 
$9.43 if you take the $3 tip out. The tip 100% goes to the driver. It's the only part of the fare that goes 100% to the driver. So if you take the tip out, um, this was uh, $9.43 is what they paid. And Uber took out $4.17. So um, that's pretty good. Again, $12.43 is what they paid. Uber took out $4.17. I can't do the math in my head. I'm not that smart. But let me see. let me just do this real quick. So eight dollars and twelve cents. Well, they took four seventeen out of twelve forty three. They took thirty three percent of that fare. That's I I find now that's pretty standard. Um, like I said, I did drive in a different market over the weekend, and I did find they were taking forty five percent of my fares. Forty, and I, I don't know why it was so high. Um, I have not been able to get a, a real good answer on that, but um, any in, in any regard, um, that's pretty standard. So, um, and then again, the insurance is there, but that gives you a detailed look of that fare, so you know exactly where the money's going, how much the rider's paying for the rides. Um, so when you see all these things online about oh, you know, Uber stealing my surge, this is where you would go to see and make sure that's not happening to you. So um, again. And this is a day-by-day -day breakdown. This gives you the whole week. You can go back, pull the top up here, look at previous weeks. So last week I killed it. You can look at the day-by-day. -day. Um, again, here you see the minus 50 cents. Uh, that's because I did a, an instant cash out. So they took 50 cents off my pay. Um, I got a dollar tip. I was negative 50 cents after I cashed out. And then I got a dollar tip, which ended up with a direct deposit of 50 cents. So... Um, pretty awesome i was pretty stoked about that um but this is a day by like i said this is a day by day breakdown tells you how many hours you worked how many trips you gave um so that in a nutshell um is the i mean obviously earnings are the most important thing that you care about so that's the earnings portion of um the uber again trips this gives you trip history um that little gray symbol means it was a surge run. Um, and then balance gives you, again, a more trip-by-trip uh, uh, -trip balance. Um, ratings. So ratings, this tells you what your ratings are. Um, you can see here I've given 447 five-star trips. My overall star rating is 4.92, and I have a 100% acceptance rate. And I've only canceled about 5% of all the rides that I've, come, that I've accepted. So the cancellation rate is how many of the accepted rides you've canceled after accepting them. So again, 5%, that's, that's pretty good. I've accepted everything that's come through. Um, and I think it's like in, the, in this, like this, this pay period, so this week. Um, 4.92 is total overall. 447 is my total number of five-star trips. So again, I drove another market last night, and that I woke up this morning, and that's at 437. And um, even this afternoon as I was driving back to my home market of Dubuque, it still said 437. And then I opened it up and it instantaneously added 10 onto there. So out of the 15 rides that I took in this other market, um, 10 of those 15 people gave me five stars. Um, I can click on the 4.92 here and it gives me a breakdown a percentage of what I'm receiving uh, for rating. So again, 97% of all my ratings are five stars. 2% are fours and 1% is one. Um, yesterday, I think I, I either got a four or a one um, because then you, you, click, you scroll down here and you can see I've got 466 lifetime rated trips. 447 of those are five stars. Um, I, was, I had received 18 non-five star trips prior to yesterday. Now I have received 19. So I received another trip yesterday that was not five stars. And then you have, a, you have, t I, have ten, I have 1,032 lifetime trips. Um, it is not uncommon for less than half of your trips to be unrated. Uh, Uber's taking a lot of steps to ensure that drivers are getting rated by every rider. Uh, there still will be a lot of riders that don't rate. Um, as drivers, we're required to rate the riders, but the riders are not required to rate the drivers. So... You can reasonably assume that if you're, they're not rating you, you probably you probably didn't do terrible because passengers will take the time to rate you if they didn't like you. If they liked you, they won't give you a rating. 
So um, it's it's not unrealistic for me to think that I had another 500 five-star trips. So um, that, in a nutshell, is uh, the ratings page. Um, Rider compliments. This is where um, you get you, you can get badges. So these are all the badges you can get. Um, and this number indicates this how many times I've gotten that badge. And then they can write you a personal note. So these are all the notes that they wrote me. Um, I don't think they can give a badge and a note. They can do one or the other. Again, they can only leave you a note if they give you five stars. Just like they can only tip you if they give you five stars. So these are all the notes that I have received. Um, I don't think there's anything new on here. I got one from March 2018. That was from St. Patty's Day weekend. Um, I don't get a lot of comments, as you can clearly see. Um, but that that's what that is. Uh, writer feedback. If anything went bad during the trip, if there was anything that was negative that the writer reported, that's what goes here. So I've had nothing. Um, if they had an issue navigation, it'll say navigation. Driving style. Uh, this just ensures that you're driving safely. That's what that shows. No issues with recent trips. If there was an issue with something you did recently on a trip, it shows up here. Um, driving rewards, you get disc, this, so this shows you different discounts you can get, car maintenance, cell phones, health plans, uh, financial packages, um, that's what this is, uh, phone plans, if you have Sprint, at t Verizon, you can apply an Uber discount to any of those packages, and then a fuel card, you can, you can get a fuel card, I have the fuel card, it gives you 5 cents off per gallon, 15 cents and select locations. Um, and it comes off your earnings. So if you're hard up for money, whatever the case may be, um, you can use your fuel card. You just have to enter your mileage and then your PIN number, which is assigned to you by Uber. And um, it comes right off your earnings with the discount. So the discount doesn't show at the pump, uh, but it shows when the final payment is posted. So... Um, that's the fuel card. I use it. I love it. Um, the only, the only bad thing about this is you have to give a hundred rides per month in order to keep that card active. That is not always an easy task. I've struggled with this a few months. I've gone a string of two or three or four months where I didn't have access to this card because I did not give a hundred rides. So you have to give a hundred rides to keep that card active. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. So, um, other than that, I love it. Um, I wish it didn't come off your card. But keep in mind, too, if you use it at the end of the week um, and you and you cash out, you do an instant cash out, you will start the next week negative because Monday morning, um, when they finalize your previous week, is when the, the cash, or is when the, the gas hits your earnings. So if, if I let it go on its own, they'll, they'll take it off the earnings and I'll start out at zero. But if I cash out, which I probably will, if I cash out tonight, um, tomorrow morning, I will be negative by, I got gas today, I think it costs somewhere around $14, so it's going to be, you know, probably 13 something after the discount. Um, that will hit, so I will start, I will start Monday negative by $13. So um, that's something to consider as well when you're um, looking at this, so um but it's a great program. Uh, if you get an opportunity to sign up, I would. Um, I, I just think it's 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 great. I love it. I love the fact that if I don't have money in my checking account, I'm hard up for cash, and I I know that I'm gonna be driving Uber for the weekend. Um, that that I I have that to fall back on. Um, if you're not gonna be driving that week, if you know you're not gonna drive that week, do not use your cash card because you you'll be negative for a while, and then it really screws you. So or don't I don't like to use it more than once per week for that reason. If you use it twice per week, you get a huge hole to dig out of and that then, you, then you're literally just driving to pay back the gas that you spent. So um, I try to use it once per week, if at all possible, just once and that's it. So last page here is account. Um, this just shows you information, way bill documents, payment, um, settings, dri drive time. So you can only drive for 12 hours at a time and that's what this shows you. Um, 12 hours at a time is a max you can drive. The timer doesn't reset until you're offline for six consecutive hours. It does pause when you shut the app off, but it doesn't reset until you've been off for six, six hours straight. Um, it's a safe driving thing. They just launched it in every market not that long ago. So again, general help is on here. 
Um, way bill shows you your last trip. I can show you that real, real quick. Um, this is the, the reference to see the specific information. Um, sometimes I, I don't know why it's on here cause I never, I never really use it. Documents show your car documents, your driver's license, your registration, uh, insurance. This is where all the information is on the app. Payment shows, um, your, your bank account info and your credit, your credit card info that you use to cash out with, uh, again, settings, uh, navigation, accessibility, uh, things like that. So that, that's what's on there. Um, and insurance information gives you the specific and the specific insurance information about the state you live in. So, um, this is where you change your vehicle. So even when you want a vehicle that you drive, you can change it right up here. You can also edit your profile by clicking on edit and it pulls everything up. Uh, I think in a separate window, um, it allows you to edit, you know, it pulls it up right here. So, um, allows you to edit all your, God, this is all, all the information I don't want on there. Um, and then driver profile, this gives you a snapshot. So this driver profile is what all the riders will see when they, when they are on a trip with you. After you've been paired, they can see all this information. So I put my free ride code in the about me section. Um, I know of other drivers that do that as well. Um, just to kind of uh, free will, I guess, that next time they, they drive, they can, they can use your code. Or the next time they ride, they can use your code. Um, your, your, generally your free ride code is the same as your driver referral code. So, um, just FYI. So this gives you the total number of trips you've given, what your star rating is and how long you've been a driver. Um, and then you can customize all these answers, obviously. So, um, if you don't have an answer to it, it doesn't actually show up on their side. So, um, and again, some of your badges are here and some of your thank you notes are here. Um, and then the driver achievements are down here. So apparently you get you get a crown, you, you get a badge at 100 five-star trips and 200 five-star trips. And you don't get another one until you get to 500. I don't know why there's the big discrepancy there, but there is. Um, so I've also done over 1,000. I thought there'd be a crown for that, but there's not. But um, 1,000 total trips. But in any regard, um, that in a nutshell is the Uber app. Um, I did want to show you guys the passenger app real quick, uh, just to kind of get that out. It, the hell did it go? I think I killed it. It's not there anymore. I somehow got rid of it. Um, so let me just pull this up here real quick. I could probably have to, oh, it's over there. I don't know how it got over there, but anyway, um, I got to figure that out. I don't want it. I don't want it on that side. I'll do with that later. So I want to pull up the rider app real quick just to kind of show you what this looks like. Um, so the cars are obviously where the cars are. So I recently found out that they only show um, eight, the eight closest drivers to you. So there could be 15 drivers on, and you're only going to see eight of them. So I just found that out, like, last weekend. I didn't know that that was a thing. So, um, but that that's what that shows. And again, um, you can quote it, see... You can quote how much it's going to take, and then it gives you a breakdown of each vehicle. And if there's, in this case, there's no XLs on right now, it's just Xs. So all three of these vehicles that are on are Uber X. So um, you can also do scheduled pickups. So you can schedule a ride. So um, again, that is the Uber Rider app. I use it to see where all the drivers are. I try to go to other areas where drivers aren't. So. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go through the, the Uber driver app and kind of show you guys what to expect on your first ride. Um, I hope this was informative. Leave me questions and comments below, um, anything specific. Um, I want to do the same thing with Lyft. I'll try to keep it, uh, I'll try to um, shorten it up and have it be a lot, lot less long. I mean, this was a 35 minute video. So um, I'm gonna edit this and post it and uh, I will see you guys for the next video, which will probably be the same thing, but with Lyft. Um, until then, Uber on, and I'll see you next time.